In less than 90 minutes, hijackers crashed four airplanes. Nearly 3,000 people died. Symbols of a powerful nation were gone or heavily damaged. The attacks of September 11, 2001 fundamentally changed many Americans' views of the country's security. I think the greatest lesson we learned was that uh, two broad oceans uh, do not protect us from the tide of history. While there had been other successful strikes on American targets, including the 1993 World Trade Center bombing and the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing, none reshaped attitudes and governmental actions like those on 9-11. Former and current secretaries of Homeland Security say the U.S. did what it had to in the face of an unpredictable enemy. I think that we basically took a sound approach. Obviously, in some cases, we maybe did a little too much. In some cases, we did too little. But... The proof of the pudding is that we were successful in, in averting uh, attacks. The American people, are they safer now? The answer is yes, but there are no guarantees in a world of ever-evolving threats. There's no question but that we're, we probably feel safer than we did immediately after 9-11. And we probably are somewhat safer, but we're also broke. Former Ambassador and State Department official James Dobbins helped author a RAND Corporation report on the response to terrorism after 9-11. We created a whole new bureaucracy for Homeland Security and created another layer in our intelligence uh, agency with a uh, national director for intelligence. We may have overshot and burdened ourselves with some additional expenses and additional layers of government that we didn't necessarily need. 9-11 forced a re-examination of how the U.S. counters potential threats Stricter airport security is the most tangible outcome of 9-11. Ah! Police patrols and mass transit systems like New York subway are a more common sight. More than 4,200 cameras are trained on the system, though it took longer than expected to get them online. The cameras at key transit hubs are directly linked to this New York Police Command Center, but officials say it's far more important to catch potential terrorists long before they get close to putting a plan into action. We've created fusion centers across the country. There are now 72 uh, to enable us to share the intel that we have across the country uh, in a way that uh, was not happening uh, before. The bigger problem is just the vast uh, quantity of information so that even if you have perfect information sharing, picking out the significant pieces is difficult. And the more information you share, the more difficult that becomes. The 9-11 Commission recommended centralizing intelligence gathering under a single director. Rand's James Dobbins says the director of national intelligence was weakened because the office doesn't oversee military intelligence. Dobbins says Congress also deserves part of the blame. He says it failed to address another recommendation of the 9-11 Commission to consolidate the number of committees that oversee intelligence. Other 9-11 Commission recommendations remain unheeded. To this day, I have nightmares of hearing police officers in the field calling for help and not being able to answer them. Ten years after 9-11, some police and fire departments still have trouble talking to each other. New York senators have introduced a bill to dedicate part of the radio spectrum for emergency communications. In addition to allowing for greater radio communications between departments, that could also give emergency workers better access to the kinds of data iPhone and BlackBerry owners enjoy. To give information in real time to police officers in the street. It'll make them safer. It'll give them a lot more information about the jobs that they're approaching, assignments that they're approaching before they, before they get there. We have to clear from the front of the building. And what about getting people out of a city after an attack? The earthquake that struck the East Coast August 23rd created a traffic and transit nightmare for people trying to get out of Washington. Would the nation's capital fare better in the face of a terror crisis? The 9-11 Commission called the fight against terror a generational challenge. It's one that even a decade after the attacks remains the top priority for political leaders and a chief concern for many people. Matt Friedman, The Associated Press.